gosh. We watched Lovecraft Country season one, episode one. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Perfection. I love this show already. Oh my gosh. I don't know how the rest is going to be, but from this episode, <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my God. <laughs> they did a great job. Oh, sorry. I just, ah, oh, damn. It was, oh, oh, okay. I'm going to try to give a, a coherent review. So it starts off with our main character, Atticus. And by the way, this little shot of Cthulhu or, or Starspawn or whatever the hell, that, that girl's so cute. Look at her, look at freaking female Hellboy. It only happens in the very beginning, like literally two minutes into the, to the episode. And this happens, but it was all in his imagination because he loves uh, uh, Lovecraft. He loves sci-fi. It's just, oh my gosh. All right, I got to take a breath for a second. Let's go into the acting. The acting is amazing. I love the three main characters. Atticus, we love Atticus's character. He's so likable. He's so relatable. I absolutely love him. I love the uncle, uh, Uncle George. Such a beautiful man. When they started out and he was making love to his wife and you could see how such a doting father and husband he is. And I'm just thinking to myself, this guy's too perfect. He's too nice. He's too likable. Something bad's gonna happen to him. I just kept feeling like we're gonna lose Uncle George. And oh my gosh, the characters are so likable. Even the girl, the uppity girl that they're with. She reminds me of Jennifer Lawrence for some reason. And she also reminds me of the girl from Preacher. And for some reason, I'm forgetting her name but she is so beautiful and she is so freaking sarah from land before her time i love her character and that's who she kind of reminds me of uh atticus reminds me of littlefoot and she reminds me of sarah and george is just who's george i guess he'd be like littlefoot's grandpa or something i love their dynamic it's so wonderful and i hope that nothing happens to george uncle george you better freaking stay alive because if he dies i'm gonna freaking cry the little girl's amazing. The people who play the villains, because this is segregate America, so the white people who are evil, they really do a good job with the villains and with their roles. It's just so amazing. And then they tied in the sci-fi with this. <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. When the monsters came out, when they started chittering like Dilophosaurus is in the forest, I just lost it. Before going forward, the only qualm I have about the episode that we immediately both were like, listen... Why did they have to spoil it? You could have used some Sam Cooke or BB King, but what in the fudgery was this? <laughs> like, it, it does not fit with the time period. And as we always say, you've seen this time and time again with the Temptations, with every historic piece, whether it's about black, white, Chinese, whatever it is, you always have music from the time. So my partner was like, yes, yeah, somebody paid to have their track put in there. It just for a moment took us out of it because we're like, whoa, you disgrace Sam fucking Cook. Okay, this was during Jim Crow uh, that ended in 1968. So they had so many beautiful singers. Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald, I believe. Of course, this is before my time, so I'm not gonna do exactly the greatest job trying to date the music, but I remember because my father would listen to all of them. One of his favorites was Sam Cooke. I think my favorite from that time period is Sam Cooke. First of all, Sam Cooke's freaking hot, that Demzel doppelganger. But he also has one of the most sultry voices. And I'm like, you never once, like, why would you put this in there instead of something like that? It was just so odd. But they did redeem it because for the rest of the episode, they did use music for the time period, which I did appreciate. And the other thing they did is they made you feel what the characters were feeling, the fear of being in these towns and meeting individuals who are so hateful. Like when they these guys were chasing them out, I felt like I wanted to run. I was shitting my pants, like <laughs> sitting there like, go, 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 go. And then when those people were shooting at them, like really you're gonna kill people in broad daylight, whatever. When they were shooting at them, I was so glad when they met their match with the witch lady. And I'm assuming that she's a witch because those are the only people at the time that were persecuted, just like the black people of the time were. They also did a fantastic casting job. I cannot dote on them enough how I love, I'm like, I wasn't so sure because I'm like, who are these people? I don't know them. I think I know Uncle George, which is the guy on the right, right here. But I don't know the other guys. I'm like, the girl's cute, the guy's whatever. And I don't really know them though. But they did a good job. These guys, I, I forget 
that they're not A-list actors because they actually did a good job. Or maybe they did a good job writing the, the dialogue for them, writing the story for them so that you believe them. I hate when they just take people for the sake of taking people and then the actors suck. And you're like, why are they here? It's taking a while for them to get into their roles. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like everyone already knows their roles for this episode, which is actually really refreshing. We gotta get the fuck out of here now! Oh, 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 no. oh. The thing about the likable characters too, like Uncle George, <laughs> the whole time I'm just freaking out because he got his kneecaps busted when he went into one of those counties. He's kind of like the guy who invented the Green Book, and I guess he makes this little travel guide so that black Americans at the time knew which places were socially safe because they would go to these towns and these racist people would be so hateful that just because you're out there minding your own business and you just happen to be a certain skin color that they feel the need to shoot you down or hang you or whatever. Just very hateful stuff. I mean, it's not a secret everyone knows about it, but I like watching these movies. It's like a reminder and it puts me in the shoes of the characters. I like stories where I can actually pretend to be the character or experience what the characters were going through. Of course, there's probably a few people who are alive during those times right now, but it's good to know like what the characters were like. People don't really have a face. When you talk about the Holocaust, when you talk about the Native Americans and those other slaves from different countries, just about every race has been enslaved or has had something horrible happen to them. And you hear about it in your history books, but you never really think about it. Like, okay, these Jewish people were torn from their families, tortured, gassed, like, really horrible stuff and you hear some accounts but when you see it portrayed on screen it's a whole different ball game it makes it more real <laughs> anyway the whole purpose for the story is for Atticus the main character who is my little foot guy to go in to the nooks and crannies of the country the dangerous parts for an African American at the time and try to find his father because his father just disappeared and even though he and his father had some issues he still loved his daddy very much of course you'd go look for your father i would go look for my dad unfortunately they meet trouble and the person i feel the sorry the sorriest for here is uncle george like they introduced the story with him so for me he's like one of the main main characters he's the one i instantly fell in love with and that was what made me so freaking stressed this entire episode just wondering if uncle george would be okay who are you? George Freeman, sir. This here is my nephew, Atticus, and his friend, Letitia. Where y'all from? Chicago, sir. You're a long way from home. Oh, we're just passing through, taking a little bathroom break, sir, is all. Any of you all know where the sun downtown is? Oh, boy. Also, the utilization of tension in the cinematography of this episode. I feel like I'm watching a movie because this is an hour-long episode. Let me tell you that. It, you will be sitting there for an hour, but you don't feel the hour as you're going by. It feels like you're actually going on an actual adventure. And every scene is so pretty, it looks like a postcard. <laughs> and of course, the main reason why I love this show already, the monsters. They're not fantasy monsters. They're not inside someone's head, one of the characters' heads. These are actual freaking monsters. They're real. They kill people. They exist. Holy crap. Oh my god, I love it so much. <laughs> now, as I've said before, I'm still new when it comes to Lovecraft. I haven't finished reading any of the books or no, little short stories or whatever. There was a whole compendium on YouTube, if you want to call it that. And I only started and I read like 15 minutes of it or listened to 15 minutes of it. But I know that Atticus was also talking about Shogoth and the creature with many eyes. I've seen pictures of this thing, and of course, that's what they have in here, which is essentially some kind of vampire-like creature, where if it bites you, you turn into one of them. So who knows how many of these monsters are actually, or were actually people, and where did the original one come from? And also... What is going on there? That's what I'd like to know too. Like, really? 
So I think that these creatures have something to do with the witches that we see at the end of the episode. I love the way they separate the chapters via the locations. I love the tension and the drama. We've been expecting you, Mr. Freeman. Okay, so are we not going to talk about this tall glass of freaking whipped cream? Damn, got some Targaryen shit going up in the show. Because <laughs> it seems as though the witchy people all have this very light colored hair and blue eyes thing going on. And they obviously don't like the racist people in the town. Because I think those people, their ancestors, also hunted down their families. They talked about the witch trials or the witch hunts, not the witch trials, the witch hunts where these people just slaughtered all the witches in the town. And I think they're trying to get back at them. And that's why they're protecting the black people because they kind of have the same enemy. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. This episode left me with so many questions, but it left me wanting to, oh, this is so unfair. And you have to wait. Like, this is not right. <laughs> I love it so much. Like, I am so happy. I... W <sighs> oh, my God. Jordan Peele and team, you guys. Dude, please keep this up. Don't stop this, please. Because this was good. I love this show. I love this show. It hasn't even started yet. I love it so much. Go see it, guys. Please go see it. Like, if you like monsters, if for anything else, you like monsters, definitely go see it. And to answer the question, a lot of people are asking if it's that kind of show where they rub your face in the preachiness of it. No, they don't. It doesn't work. It doesn't apply to this show because I can understand where some people are coming from where they try to vilify white people and everything is about white people are bad and just just overdoing it to the point where it's just nauseating. But it's not like that because it fits with the time. There were evil white people. I mean, there's evil all people, but let's be serious. At that time, the black people were very, very oppressed. And this is actually based on history. Of course, the monsters are not. For, for all we know, you never know. H.P. Lovecraft monsters could be real. Maybe not. But this is actually something that happened. So it is actually really enjoyable. And I don't see any political messages or whatever. I mean, I'm sure there's some political messages in there, but that fit the time. So please go and watch. It is totally worth you giving it a chance. Just take it from me. I don't know how the other episodes are going to turn out, but for right now, I love what I see. Absolutely, I want to see more. Thank you so much for making this a possibility, and now we have something to watch. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulteori. You ask, we answer.